Beyond the Badge is brought to you by Stefan Kadolin of Caldwell Banker Burnett Realty and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund. Welcome to Beyond the Badge, a program about the inner workings of the Edina Police Department. Thanks for joining us. I'm Officer Brian Hubbard. The City of Edina is being recognized for its dedication to city-employed guards and reservists. A regional ESGR committee signaled out the city as one of only two Minnesota employers worthy of being placed in the national running for the highest grade employer distinction granted by the Department of Defense, the prestigious Freedom Award. Last month, the city was named a national semifinalist for the award. Officer Raffidal and another police officer both serve in the Coast Guard Reserve. They had both been deployed and the city of Edina provided uh, above and beyond benefits. They provided pay differential, they continued uh, medical leave, they uh, made sure that their families had things taken care of while they were deployed. The Freedom Award is bestowed to organizations in both the private and public sectors to recognize actions taken and policies instituted in support of staff active in the National Guard or National Reserve. Out of more than 3,200 nominees, regional committees advanced only 133 organizations to the rank of national semifinalist. In the last five years, ESGR has bestowed on the city every accolade it gives below the Pinnacle Freedom Award level, and most more than once. That includes most recently the prestigious 2011 Pro Patria Award for an employer in the public sector. Pro Patria translates to For the Fatherland and is so named in recognition of the fact that employers' ability to be accommodating is a service to the nation as a whole as well as to the deployed employee and his or her family. When a member of the military deploys, the most important thing to that member is knowing that things back home are taken care of. Knowing that my job was secure, knowing that uh, the time away was being covered by uh, other officers and, that, uh, and not having that, uh, that, that stress of worrying about my job was a critical part of it. A National Review Board composed of military and civilian leaders will whittle down the list of 133 semifinalists to 15 winners. The recipients will be announced this summer and honored at a special ceremony Thursday, September 20th in Washington, D.C. Last year, the Edina Fire Department's paramedics responded to more than 3,600 emergency medical service calls. Edina police officers are often the first on the scene during medical emergencies. All police officers are trained as emergency medical technicians to assist until paramedics arrive. Let's go out to Officer Aaron White to tell us more. Thanks, Brian. Today we're in the garage where we store the police cars at the Edina Police Department, and I'm joined by Officer Eric Carlson. Eric, thanks for being here. Not a problem. Thank you. The reason we asked you to be here today is to learn a little bit more about how Edina Police Patrol officers respond as part of the city's EMS response, the emergency medical response in the city. And let's start with that. How exactly do you play a part in that response? Well, when an emergency call comes in from medical, or similar related, uh, the fire department is dispatched along with one or two police cars and quite often, if not always, we tend to get there before the fire department and we have uh, the training and equipment to make a difference. And important to note, Edina is somewhat unique here in Hennepin County in that we have our own in-house paramedics and as part of our fire department, uh, so you work alongside with them. Real closely. In addition, uh, the state requires us to be at minimum first responders. The city of Edina has us trained up and maintained at the level of EMT basic, emergency med medical technician. And what does that training involve? For the EMT basic, it's 120 classroom hours, including clinical time and quite a bit of time then in the field learning to put into practice what you've learned. And then you're constantly refreshing that training as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Every couple of years we're sent through a refresher and the refresher doesn't cover the same old things. It usually has some new and interesting topics. So when people see uh, police cars responding in the community, there's not always a crime in progress, but oftentimes you're uh, responding along with the fire department. Absolutely. What are some of the typical medical calls you respond to during a shift? Go to quite a few uh, chest pain, which can be anything from an ingestion all the way through a heart attack. Quite often there's a uh, high likelihood of a diabetic response or crisis. 
occasionally a trauma of some sort, falls, car crashes. Well, response time is really a key because uh, the paramedics might be at the station, whereas you might be a block away. That's true. Said, We're so. pretty much constantly rolling around the city, looking for trouble and, and sure. responding when sent. Very good. And as such, uh, we're standing before a squad car here. Um, the squad cars all carry quite a bit of equipment. Can you show us some of the medical equipment uh, on board here? Absolutely. One of the major places is, is this yellow device. It's a AED, which is an automated external defibrillator, uh, heart shocker in layman's terms. Sure. It allows us to help convert uh, poor rhythm into a sustainable rhythm. Just like on TV? Pretty much, but do you, do you put that jelly on the paddles? No jelly, and... stickers, and right. the machine does most of the work. But the same concept, important. Basically, correct. Sure. Correct. And that's been shown to have a really hot, really important uh, outcome for quick defibrillation and, and a cardiac arrest. Very good. We also carry, as a medicine, oxygen, which we administer to people who have shortness of breath, mm -hmm. asthma. Uh, it pretty much helps everything. Sure. And in the case of a cardiac event or a stroke, extra oxygen will be a, a really important thing for the persons. In our oxygen kit, we carry uh, airway management devices so we can breathe for a person and uh, maintain their airway if they're incapable of it. In our bag, we also carry some medium, not necessarily advanced, first aid supplies for sure. bleeding and shock and those things. Bottom line though is, even though we have paramedics with a higher skill set and maybe some better and more sophisticated equipment, the point is you may be a block away. I really want to emphasize that and it sounds like we're uh, pretty well equipped in all these squads. Exactly. I the basic equipment, which with creativity and training covers a lot. Very good. Well, Eric, thanks for giving us a little insight today as to how the police play a role in that EMS response. Happy to help. Eric Carlson is a police officer working in our patrol division here at the Edina Police Department. And we'll return to you, Brian. The city of Edina encourages drivers, bicyclists, and pedestrians to share the road. It's important that all users know the law and their responsibilities. Last month, we focused on bicyclists. This month, we want to remind pedestrians of what they should be aware of when walking or running around the community. Pedestrians must follow all traffic control signals at intersections. If there are crosswalks, use them. Those crosswalk areas, uh, it creates a culture of safe driving uh, and safe for pedestrians as well uh, when both pedestrians and drivers understand and comply with the existing laws. It also provides a designated area for drivers to stop in they recognize that as an area where pedestrians will be crossing. Also provides for a safe zone for pedestrians to cross in. Every pedestrian crossing a roadway at any point other than within a marked crosswalk or at an intersection with no marked crosswalk must yield the right of way to all vehicles. Pedestrians cannot cross at any place except in a marked crosswalk between intersections where traffic control signals are in place. On behalf of my co-host, Officer Aaron White, and the rest of the officers of the Edina Police Department, thanks for tuning in to learn a little bit more of what goes on beyond the badge. Until next time, stay safe. Beyond the Badge is brought to you by Stefan Kadolin of Coldwell Banker Burnett Realty and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund.